Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers and I'm looking at an interesting book this morning from Oxford University Press. It's called Islamic Finance. It's this book here. It's written by and edited by Craig Nethercott and David Eisenberg. You can see the book. It's quite small. It's 350 pages. There's a very short um, index at the back which is quite helpful. I'll just show you that there. And then you've got what is the normal for uh, the OUP publications. You've got a nice little chapter index at the front of each chapter, which is extremely helpful. Then you have the paragraph numbering at the sides and the footnotes at the bottom, which are extremely helpful. This is an interesting book because it's an area of law which actually quite a few practitioners come um, become involved with, but it's not an area that we know particularly much about. Uh, in fact, because it's not part of our general syllabus for training. There's a preface which is well worth reading. We put a review on the web which has been um, given the title An Authoritative Overview of the Law and Practice of Islamic Finance. And that's what the book is, is actually about. And I think it's a very useful um, introduction to the debate. The Islamic finance industry is now extended, of course, beyond the traditional borders of the Islamic world. And likewise its impact on the financial environments of non-Islamic countries, which no doubt will continue to increase. As yet, however, there are apparently not that many specialist books on the subject of Western languages, hence the timeliness of this carefully researched uh, book, which has just been published by OUP. This volume, say the editors, um, has been designed to provide readers involved in the industry, as well as scholars and students interested in the subject, with an up-to-date overview of Islamic finance that is grounded in both doctrine and practice. The result brings together the expertise and the perspectives of no less than 14 learned contributors, including lawyers, academics and financial practitioners, uh, based both here in London and Riyadh. In examining uh, such a vast and complex subject, the book is distinguished by its clarity and readability. Fortunately, it makes no claim to be encyclopedic, uh, especially, for example, on matters such as Sharia's compliant home mortgages. The editors point out that the book is descriptive and therefore does not pass judgment on Sharia's practice in such matters, although there are other texts, of course, which do. The focus of the book, then, is specific uh, in terms of its areas and its issues, and it, following the introductory chapters on the general background to Islamic finance and Islamic law, that includes specific references to the Quran, there follow chapters on such key areas as accounting, which is of course a very important area for us, and also corporate governance and financial regulation. Basic terms used in Islamic finance are also dealt with, and this is, an, I think, a very useful area for the book. They're described as being tra uh, transliterated from the Arabic, according to standard academic convention. So if, like us, you're unfamiliar with such terms of, as Musharaka, Mudaraba, Mudarabaha, and uh, Tawaruk, as well as Sukuk and Takaful, um, and so forth, to name only a few, you'll find it helpful. My pronunciations are not good, I do know that. Let me s conclude by saying that the book is extensively footnoted, as I said, and it opens up further avenues for research. If you're unfamiliar, therefore, with Islamic finance, you'll find yourself faced with um, the necessity of understanding something like this with your practice. This is the book that will assist you. And I'd like to thank everybody concerned at OUP for producing what is extremely helpful to us as the law and practice of Islamic finance. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.